Greetings YouTube. Just wanted to do a video of my 1978 C50 Chevy truck. Two ton. It's got a GMC grill on it, but it is a Chevy. Uh, yeah, I just want to make a video of this thing that isn't stupid or of a dumb project or what have you. Um, mileage unknown. It has a 350 crate engine in it. I bought this one. Pop the hood here. If I can get it. There we go. Yeah. Even good wrench engine in it. I'm not sure what the year is on it. Um, when I bought this thing uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the gentleman I bought it from said that the bottom end had been rebuilt. It's even got a brand new oil pan on it. I paid uh, $1,250 for the truck. Uh, I bought it from a, uh, a HVAC company uh, just down the, down the road from my house. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd actually uh, noticed this thing in their parking lot on the Sunday. And being an old Chevy truck fan, I'm like, man, I've always wanted to climb on one of those medium duties. So I figured, well, they're, they're not open. I'll just go have a look at it. So I was checking it out, and I noticed on the windshield that uh, some uh, worn-off soap said for sale. And it looked like it said $1,250. I'm like, no way. It's got to be like $12,500. No idea what these things were worth at the time. But anyway, $1,250. So I said, heck, I got $1,200 I don't need. Uh, called them up, took it for a test, test drive, handed them cash, and... Away I went with it. Yeah, the company is called TVR. Probably, I guess you can almost kind of see it on the video where the their logo was there. But yeah, local local company here in Boise. Anyway, yeah, yeah, smoking deal on the truck. Uh, rear tires on it are okay, minus. Uh, I'm not sure if it's this one or this one on the other side. It's got a little split in the sidewall. It's got eight and a quarter. Uh, by 20 on the rears, uh, seven and a half on the front. The uh, the dash tag calls for six and a half. See, so yeah, there's that big old split on there. So, yeah, I'd, you know, tread on these are okay. That that split one's got to go. The steers are bald as heck. The other one's worse. Anyway, it's a it's a good running truck. It's got an SM465 Muncie transmission in it, and four speed. Uh, a little body damage on it, a little bit of rust there. Really, I'm pretty sure that's body fill there. It's way too thick to be paint. I mean, yeah, it's almost bare metal right there. It's got a few layers of paint on it, that's for sure. Interior's uh, a mess. There's no holes in the floorboard that I know of. I haven't really uh, gone through here a whole bunch, but I think it was just a thick layer of dirt in here when I got it. I cleaned it out, and it's a lot of surface rust on the floor there. Kind of some. Uh, some crusty stuff flaking about. You really, yeah, some real flaky surface rust there. I need to do something about the floor. Yeah, thick layer of dirt when I got it, so I cleaned out all that mud. Um, <clears throat> yeah, dash is uh, toast. At one point or another, somebody decided to spray paint this thing. Bad idea. They even put a, a band aid on one of the cracks. <laughs> Kind of silly. Uh, none of the uh, the original Telltale lights work. Um, that's your temperature gauge there. That's not working. Uh, I think that was a clock. Uh, let's see here. Vacuum gauge not hooked up. Um, let's see here. Where's that the temp gauge? You know, I really can't tell what's what because they oversprayed on this thing so bad. No, that's a temp gauge. No. No, it's not the temp gauge. I really can't tell. I apologize. I'm sure somebody uh, familiar with the original layout of a dash and this thing would, would know better than I would. So please, uh, do tell. Uh, we'll assign them one, two, three, and four. Uh, speedo, not working. Uh, speedo cable uh, was not well secured and leaned onto the uh, exhaust manifold and it's toast. So it needs to be replaced. Fuel gauge does work. Um... The steering wheel here, it came with uh, this crappy little steering wheel in it, I'll show it to you here in a sec. I pulled this out of my uh, 1987 GMC 2500 Vandura, which if you've uh, seen the other videos on my channel, that's uh, that's been turned into a trailer, which is <coughs> right over there. 
yeah, so salvage this nice GMC steering wheel. Uh, this switch here is for the strobe lights on top. Let's do work. Uh, I actually put that switch in there because some some genius cut a hole in the roof for the switch. And it was just a regular toggle switch, not unlike the one that I have installed in there now, instead of drilling a round hole and nutting the thing on there. They thought it would be a good idea to cut a rectangular hole that the whole switch could pass through and gooked it up with a bunch of silicone. So I need to fix that. In the meantime, I've got a bucket. Um, screws from the, uh, the strobe light protruding through the ceiling there. So, you know, the interior definitely uh, reflects the price, but the, the way this thing runs, uh, man, uh, just a smoking deal on this thing. Steering box is worn out, uh, power steering leaks, no air conditioning, obviously. Um, heater core, yeah, doesn't seem to have any issues. Uh, the blower does work, it's the electrical portion of it has been bypassed in one way or another. But the, the switch here does work. Um, can't remember if it's got multiple speeds or not, but it's uh, a little pressure gauge down here. Um, sorry, temp gauge right next to it. Yeah, somebody, I think they, they had oversprayed with the uh, spray paint and they tried cleaning these, uh, cleaning the lens with alcohol or something. They, uh, they fogged them up real bad. But the, the gas gauge is still legible. But uh, when I got this thing, this temp gauge here, it also had black spray paint on it. And I never really paid attention to it. I just had the oil gauge. So I was thinking I needed to install a, a temp gauge in this thing. So I was getting ready to do that and trying to figure out exactly what I needed. And I thought, well, hey, it was just paint all over this. So I scratched it all off. Working temp gauge. Um, this switch right here, in another one of my videos, one of my long-winded idiot videos, this controls a block heater with a relay. Uh, obviously the truck has to be plugged into 110 power for the block heater to work. Um, but I also had wired in a trickle charger for the battery so that I could um, have that going when it's plugged in. So I've got this bell box in here. There's more detail on the video, but there's a, there's a small uh, DC controlled relay in here. Um, that when I flip that switch in the dash, it turns this side of the outlet on. That's the block heater right there. So during summertime, and you know, mo most intelligent people wouldn't go to all this trouble and expense to put this in here. They just have a double-ended extension cord or, or you know, a two-end extension cord so they could plug both in. But I decided to get all fancy and like, oh, I'll just have it so I have one one plug the extension cord and I can just flip a switch in the dash when I don't need to run the block heater which is kind of silly but whatever um, yeah here's the trickle charger just a little Schumacher little $30 unit uh, connected it to the battery with uh, these uh, marine style terminals the trucks connected via the GM style battery hookups um, yeah the electric electrical in this thing's a nightmare it's all been hacked up uh, so so funky and just duct taped and bailing twine together over the years. It, it's a mess. It needs to be completely rewired. Um, you know, what's cool about these trucks, uh, they came with this uh, terminal block under here. It's got a legend there. It tells you what's what. Most of it's not, well, part of it's not very legible. But uh, yeah, it's got uh, a binding post uh, that's reserved just for setting up trailer wiring and then and most everything else that you would uh, you need to tie into if you bought this thing as a blank uh, cabin chassis, as it was, I'm sure, when it was uh, pushed out the factory, uh, is all under that flap there. I plan to upgrade this with uh, with a closed uh, terminal block, you know, uh, some kind of a box, and I'll upgrade it all with modern fuses and all that. And then I've got the uh, the fuse box that also came out of that '87 GMC van that I intend to uh, swap out with the really too dark to see but the original glass fuse type fuse box under here I'll rewire the entire thing two fuel tanks on it this is 40 gallon auxiliary tank this is what's currently hooked up uh, the saddle tank on the other side which sits under that step there um, was using it but the uh, the neck came unsoldered and 
uh, just really didn't feel like fixing it. And when I got this thing, there was no nozzle or no uh, fill neck on the on the tank. So again, that came off the uh, this unit here came off the GMC van, and I just kind of welded it up to some uh, exhaust uh, pipe adapters and clamped it on there with uh, some plumbing parts <coughs> from uh, Lowe's. Yeah, this thing didn't even have a fuel filter on it uh, when I got it. And somebody had even uh, spliced uh, the fuel lines together, the rubber fuel lines, with a uh, vinyl hose. So you'd have a sectional uh, rubber fuel hose, and then you'd have a section of uh, vinyl <laughs> aquarium tubing jammed into it, splicing it to another piece. So now it's got a fuel, ta uh, fuel filter on it there. Um, that red wire is running to the sending unit, which I'm so happy that it happened to work in this tank. Once I got it all hooked up, it reads out correctly. So I've got that uh, that first little fram fuel filter, fuel filter there. And then I've got the uh, the glass type filter here. This has a mechanical fuel pump. I like to have these up front, as do many people, just so you can see the gas making its way up to the carburetor, so that. For some reason your sending unit fails, you do know whether or not fuel is actually making it to the carburetor. Yeah, after I uh, changed over that fuel tank, see here's what's left of the other one, it's not connected to nothing right now. Um, yeah, uh, gained a whole bunch of horsepower. This thing was getting started fuel through all those uh, <laughs> jerry-rigged fuel lines, so took it out for a test drove and stuck my foot in it, and it just took off before that it would kind of go bleh. But took and uh, tuned it up, uh, did the timing on it. Really needs new plug wires. I mean, everything in here is just so poorly routed and put together. Uh, the company that had this, the gentleman told me that he had, when he started the company uh, 18 years ago, more like uh, 21 years ago now, uh, that this is the truck that he had from day one. He said it's been all over the place, all over Idaho, Washington, Oregon, just all over the region where they've uh, done work. Yeah, he was sad to see it go, but they had, the reason they parted with it is because, A, it's old and just uh, needs a lot of maintenance, and B, they had gotten a new Ford diesel with a longer bed and a lift gate on it. Um, radiator on this thing, big, big, tall radiator. Um, I've actually had to solder uh, the seams along, well, you know, back there behind the shroud. I've had to solder that up in a couple of places on this thing uh, because it started leaking real bad. You know, like right here, this is one of the sections I repaired. It's it's not exactly pretty, but uh, for just uh, a map gas torch and uh, some regular plumbing flux and solder, it, uh, it's holding up great. Uh, the two places I've repaired have not uh, shown any signs of leaking again. So it's doing pretty well. To get a used one of these radiators on eBay, it was like 500 bucks. Of course, I can take and have this one uh, rebuilt and what have you. And I do plan to do that eventually. Uh, one of the radiator shops in town. I can't imagine it cost me more than 200 bucks to have it totally rebuilt, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's the brake fluid reservoir down there. And we've got the... Uh, This guy right down here, vac line booster, kajigger, whatever. I'm not a guru mechanic, so I don't know all the names for all these components, but the, the brakes on this thing work real good. I haven't uh, taken drums and off and whatnot to inspect them, but it stops right now, I know that much. Um, trailer harness was on here at one point, it's been cut off. I put a meter on these wires. And, not getting any voltage to them again. Everything just needs to be rewired because it's just a mess, as you can expect on a on a truck from the uh, the late 70s. Anyway, pick these uh, manuals for it up on eBay. Uh, you see here, this is a 1977 manual. So this is kind of the uh, the main bread and butter of the truck, and they came out with a supplement for the 1978 year uh, medium duty trucks, and this one. 77 covers through five ton or six ton, I think. It's really, really neat reading this thing. It shows you all the different uh, different options that they had in the truck. I originally thought this one came with a 366, 
but uh, this C50 during this year model was only offered with a, uh, an inline 292 or a small block 350. So, so yeah, it'd be awesome if this thing had a 366 to have a lot more torque, but it doesn't. So I bought these manuals mainly after a wiring diagram because the mechanical portions of this, aside from, you know, the heavy duty, you know, axle and that sort of stuff. Um, really not a whole lot to it, you know, small block Chevy, most, uh, most avid mechanics can rebuild one of those with a blindfold, I would imagine. Um, but anyway, not a wiring diagram in them. I was digging and digging and digging and digging and I finally get to the section in this one that talks about the wiring says you need the wiring diagram book. So another $15 on eBay. I think I got, you know, 50 or 60, maybe $70 worth of manuals there, including shipping. But, you know, these are full tilt boogie shop manuals. There is not a uh, detail left turn turned in here. They even tell you how to rebuild the steering box down to every last little bearing inside of them. After looking at the uh, the illustrations in there, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to try to rebuild that. <laughs> I'll hire somebody who knows what they're doing. But yeah, it's an absolutely fantastic truck. I love this thing. It's got a 14-foot flat bed on it. Uh, I think at one point or another, this is a welding service truck. Um, can't really see it because of the junk in the way here, but you see that. You can kind of see where this patch is. There's a smaller one next to it. So I think, so I think there may have been some welding gas tanks on here. And underneath you see this portion here i think this is where a basket was to support those those welding gas bottles but yeah there again there's uh there's those patches <laughs> this bed is really not so well put together i think it's been a few different things over its lifetime but it's uh it's holding together well enough right now and it works works good and hard uh flew over a uh, after I fixed the radiator the second time, took it out for a good hard test spin and went over a cattle grate at 50, 50 mile an hour and threw this, uh, this gate completely off of it and it just went for a flight. I don't remember if this tab was on it at the time or not, but I made that one out of flat bar and just kind of welded this thing back together where, where a whole bunch of welds broke and had to pound it straight. This is all bent over from where it hit the road. It, uh, it was a good, uh, good 30 40 yards from the cattle guard um, laying along the roadside I had to go out there and find it the next day because it was dark when I <laughs> when I went and threw it off but uh, yeah go ahead and start it up it has not been ran since yesterday it uh, it was parked on my lawn there's a couple of old couches under that tarp there we I parked it on the lawn for the fourth and had the couches up there so people could uh, watch our fireworks display and some redneck comfort anyway let me get this thing off my hand she's in neutral usually five or so pumps does this thing pretty good yeah she's not super loud or anything I'm guessing that's the uh, the original muffler on there. It's it's falling apart. Um, the inlet is no longer <laughs> bonded to the pipe. It's just kind of sticking in there. But you know, any old truck, it's got lots of noise and squeaks. And you turn this thing real hard one way, the belt screams. You know, all the perfect real stuff probably really needs to be rebuilt. That uh, that pulley on the uh, harmonic balancer there. I was driving down the road with it one day and could hear something tinging on the fan blade so I immediately pulled over and decided to see what was going on and one of the bolts holding that pulley on there was sticking out and it was hitting the fan blades and shut it off and turns out some genius put the uh, bolts in there that were about a half inch too short and they were all marred up on the end so we got some longer bolts and set them up with some Loctite but it's an absolutely great running truck Easily best 1200 bucks I've ever spent on a vehicle. Can't complain about it one bit, especially for the price. The only thing I don't like is people asking me to move, help them move. That's the job. And I'm sure all my neighbors think I'm nuts. Of course, I'm kind of
kind of known in this neighborhood as the local junkyard operator. Got rid of my other flatbed not too long ago. Now I gotta get an engine in that crew cab. Engine and transmission. Anyway, thanks for watching.